land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land I am on my way to those mansions there just over in the glory land there to sing God's praise and his glory share just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land now you got to be real careful you will mess up like I did and you'll have the mighty host where the happy angel band ought to be all right as if they, as if they work the same thing I'm always getting them messed up oh I want to tell you something brother uh, brother carpenter told me that uh, church he was raised in <clears throat> They used, uh, they used an old hymnal called the church hymnal. And uh, most of the songs, probably 99% of them, had these parts where people come in, okay, and repeat the words. And uh, if you can do that, do that, all right, uh, where, it, where it does that. Uh, but, but he said he grew up with uh, daddy singing one part, mama singing another part, and everybody was singing their part. And uh, man, they had church when they sang. Amen. All right. Uh, well, let's sing that uh, on the third. What a joyful thought that my Lord I'll see just over in the glory land. And with kindred saved there forever be Just over in the glory land Just over, over in the glory land How to join, yes, join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over, over in the glory land there with Yes, with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land Like that With the blood washed strong I will shout and sing Just over in the glory land Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King Just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there I'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land amen all right be seated if you will I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the Pelkies to come and sing it this time, okay? And uh, amen. All right. We're gonna have Brother Tim to. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll do that too. Good. I'm glad. Let's do that first. Thank you, brother. That would be good. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. You know what to do. Amen. So just pray together. <clears throat> Lord, we do pray to ask you today. Lord, it's serious what Brother Bob's going through. Pray to help him and help Brother Gilbert give him wisdom and grace to be a blessing to help others. And Father, we're assembled, we're gathered to meet with you. Thank you. 
And our Father, thank you for the throne of grace that's open to us. In Jesus' name, we can just come before you freely. And we're not worthy, but we come in his name. We're asking for a blessing this morning. We're hungry. We're like those baby birds with their mouths open. And you said, open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. And I pray, Lord, that you'll speak to our hearts this morning. I pray you'll help uh, Brother Tim, give him special grace and wisdom and power and ability beyond himself from heaven. Lord, I, I pray that you'll help him and uh, uh, all the preaching that goes on this morning and then again tonight. Uh, but Lord, I know everybody's already thought about this. We, uh, we sure want to pray for Brother Bob. Hamblin, we, we pray, Father, that you'll uh, give him grace and encouragement for his heart. Help Rose, we pray. Thank you for their lives and their dedication to you. And help Brother Gilbert, we pray. Uh, I pray that uh, you give him uh, your message for uh, the funeral service that he preaches and that you give him uh, grace and wisdom to be a blessing at the the other viewing that he'll be going to. And Lord, people are hurting. And I pray you use him in their lives. And I pray you'll help him. And I, I pray, Lord, for all the ladies, all the workers that have uh, worked so diligently uh, to take care of our needs. And uh, I, I pray uh, that you'll help them and bless them and uh, give them a special touch, Lord. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness, your grace, your mercy. Thank you most of all for saving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, <clears throat> she didn't know it, but I was already planning to sing this song this morning. I hope it'll be a blessing. Let me do it. Oops. All right. Here we go. Are you ready? You ready? Here we go. All right. All right, we're in the key of D. You, you play by ear too, don't you? Glory the word that I sing today Glory the word since he washed my sins away Glory the feeling that I have inside Since Jesus came there to abide Oh well it's glory, glory, glory Joy is now inside Glory, glory, glory Peace there now abides Glory, 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 His love is sweet within. My Savior lifted me out of the depths of sin. Satan doesn't like to know there's glory in my soul. He can't stand the pressure when God has full control. Satan wants the glory, he'd like to be the boss. He sure liked it better when he knew I was lost. It's glory, 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 fill my heart today. Glory, 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 sins are washed away. Glory, 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 I know who holds my hand. I'll let the Lord take full control, be under his command. Oh, well, it's Glory, glory, joy is now inside. Glory, 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 peace there now abides. Glory, 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 his love is sweet within. 
My Savior lifted me out of the depths of sin. Oh, well, it's glory, glory, glory. Joy is now inside. Glory, glory, glory. Peace there now abides. Glory, glory, glory. His love is sweet within. My Savior lifted me out of the depths of sin. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, turn in your Bibles to Psalm 104 and look at verses 33 and uh, 34. And uh, you'll be looking at the words to the song we're about to sing. <clears throat> I will sing, I will sing unto, the Lord, unto the Lord as long as I live. I, live. I will sing praise will sing to my God, to my God while I have my being, my, my meditation, meditation of Him. I will sing, I will sing unto, the Lord, unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise will sing to my God, God when I have my being, my meditation of Him shall be sweet. I will be glad. to have Brother Tim Carpenter with us. No, it's Tim Davenport. Yeah, I keep trying to call you a different name. Um, let, me, let me tell you something. I was raised in Michigan. And I was raised, yeah, and I was raised saying Davenport. And when I found out you could call it a couch, I was liberated. And in Michigan, you know that little uh, that little place where you get maps and and you got tissue and everything in your car. Uh, we we had we I, I was raised calling that a glove compartment, huh? When I got to Mississippi and heard it called a glove box, I said glory. I don't have to say compartment or Davenport anymore. Amen. This is real spiritual, isn't it? I'm trying to prepare your heart for preaching. Amen. 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 God bless you, brother. We're glad you're able to be with us today. And, and uh, Brother Hamlin's in uh, pretty bad shape. Uh, he's just going to try to lay low uh, the rest of the week. Uh, and uh, Brother Gilbert had to uh, go on to a funeral. Um, if he was here, I wouldn't be able to cut up like this. You know how so sober and somber he is. Yes, yes, amen. In all seriousness, though, we're we're grateful that brother <clears throat> that brother Davenport is able to be here. And uh, not only does he pick a mean piano and a mean guitar, and uh, has gifts to glorify God that way, but uh, fine preacher, and uh, he's going to give us God's word now, brother. I'm done now. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to Luke chapter 15 is where we're going to start. Luke chapter 15. While you're turning there, I might, I might throw, eh, I'll be all right. Need your water? No, I was looking for the rig to get up the, what you call it, the, it, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. If I have to, I'll cut one of these on and around. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, Luke chapter number 15. And uh, man, I just, I, here, here's what's on my mind here this morning, on my heart this morning, is uh, 
thinking about, uh, well, I just, just thinking about uh, welcome home. Welcome home. And uh, there's a couple different spots in the scripture. I want to think about this. This welcome home. And uh, it's not deep, but anyway, whatever. Welcome home. Amen. And uh, I spent, spent a lot of time away from home. And uh, when I was uh, uh, right out of high school, and, you know, it was always nice to go home and see everybody. And uh, it seemed like our relationships were even better when you spent time away from people that you love and you get back with them. But there's always a good good time coming home. There's some times where I'll be out, my wife and kids will be home. Not very often. It doesn't happen very often. But every now and again, there'll be times where I'll go out just for maybe a day or two at the most without my wife and kids. And I'll come home, and it's great to get home. Amen. It's great to get home. And I always get all the kids. If it's if it's one day, it feels like it's been like a year, you know. And because uh, we're with each other so much of the time, and I almost have to apologize to them about that. But anyway, I'm not really. But uh, and uh, but uh, so anyway, um, and uh, it's always a great time. Maybe when you get home, get a bunch of hugs. You know, all those little ones running up and giving you a hug. And Dad, we ain't seen you in three years. It's actually only been 24 hours, honey. But that's okay. And uh, that's what we do after camp season. You know, it's seven weeks of camp, and then it's like, oh, hey, kids. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm dad's son. I'm not really, but. And uh, so, uh, and then, of course, you get a big hug from the wife and all that kind of stuff. And I won't give you many details of Brother Miller did last night. Amen. <laughs> and uh, all that. So, anyway, uh, bless his heart. So, anyway. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, anyway, but it's great to be welcomed home, isn't it? And uh, you meet, uh, I, I know some of you. Uh, we're in the uh, service of different things, and I just can't imagine what it's been like, you know, talking to different men that had been overseas and got back, and they said, well, it's just wonderful just to, to be home, you know, to get back and talk to one, one guy that used to be in our church, and he was, uh, uh, when he got back, he said he just, he just couldn't help, but he just fell down and started kissing the ground when he got back to the American shores, and, and uh, he said it's just a wonderful thing to be back into his home country and what he'd been fighting for. And uh, and trying to protect and all that. So it's a wonderful welcome home. And and uh, uh, so anyway, we're thinking about welcome homes this morning, the welcome home celebration. The first thing I want to think about, Luke chapter 15, is a familiar. Everybody knows this passage you can preach out of. I, this is one of those passages. Every time I every time I read this story about the prodigal son, it seems like there's another message there. So you know what I mean? It's it's just that one of those passages, and I just. You just, uh, no matter how many times I read it, you know, it seems like it just keeps jumping out at you. But so many things you could say about it. But uh, we think about this story and we know what happened here. Uh, verse 11, and uh, he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided uh, to him, them, his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. How sad. How sad. Young man basically went and uh, thumbed his nose at his father and said, Listen, I, I'm sick of your rules. I don't want to live your way anymore. I want to live my way. I want what's coming to me. Give it to me. I want it. I want my stuff. And uh, I'm out of here. He, had a, he lived in bad circumstances. He had a bad attitude. He left. He left in a in a in a disgruntled kind of way, in a in a not good relationship. He left just. You imagine this thought just trampling the love of that father there, and I can't help but think of how we sometimes trample on the love of our father and say, you know what? I know you want me to do it this way, but I'm gonna do it my way anyway. You know, isn't that just awful? That we or hey, yeah, give me the uh, give me the inheritance in heaven, but now I'm gonna go my way. And waste my substance with it. Right, just living away from God. But anyway, we think about this problem, how he left in rebellion. He left careless with his relationship, careless of how his father felt, careless of what it was going to do to them, and didn't care about it. He was going to go do things his way. He got away from the father in a place called a far country. Now, where's it, how far is far? I don't know. Now, there's different levels of far. Far is a relative term. You can, you know, you know, you can sit in a pew and be in a far country, right? You know, you can be a church sitting in a pew and be in a far country. And uh, sitting here in your body, but the heart is in so many other places, the heart not willing to be submissive to God and all that. But anyway, he left in bad circumstances, and. He had this change that took place, this, this crazy attitude change that took place as he went and found out that everything he had, he wasn't, 
he wasn't invincible. He, <laughs> he, uh, he, all of the stuff that he had that he took for granted didn't last forever, and it came hard. You know, it's not, <laughs> we just, sometimes I think spiritually, unfortunately, we take things for granted. We have taken for granted the spiritual uh, hard battles that were fought in the, in the years ago, and it's, and it's allowed us to get really sleepy as Christians, you know. And now we're going, oh, wait a second. We're starting to wake up and go, wait a second. There, there's some big battles that need to be fought here. And uh, it's about time we wake up again to those battles, isn't it? Goodness. And uh, we need God's help in that. But anyway, he went and, and uh, wasted all this that he had. You know the story. He ended up in uh, a place of great famine, a mighty famine, the Bible says, in the land. And he began to be in want. Wow, what a change. He had never wanted for anything before in his life. And he surely didn't want when he was in the father's house, right? And uh, I want to tell you too, when you're at the father's house and close with the father, you're not going to be in want either. He's going to supply every need that you have. And he's so gracious to do that. And whether it's internal things that we need or physical things we need, whatever the case is, God's so wonderful to provide for us. And we can tell you story after story about that in the last month, how the Lord's done that. So anyway, but... Uh, but he was, began to be in one. Then he goes and he's down there and, and joins himself to a citizen of that country in the fields feeding swine. A nasty pig farmer. Amen. <laughs> and uh, hey, I'm, I'm not knocking it. I like pork, but uh, I'm not a Jew. <laughs> Amen. Uh, at least not that way. You know, maybe in the heart. I don't know. I don't know you go with all that. But uh, anyway, uh, but... Anyway, give me some bacon. Hallelujah. It makes every sandwich better. And I've never had a sandwich that wasn't better with bacon. That's, that's all I'm going to say. I challenge you to give me a sandwich that wouldn't be better with bacon. I challenge you. And uh, I think checkmate. Okay. <laughs> anyway, no. Um, but uh, um, whatever. <laughs> and uh, so praise the Lord. But anyway, all this happened. He was down there saying, man, I wish I could, eat. I wish I could even eat the husk that the, that the pigs were eating. And uh, he just, he just, he's, he said, I perish with hunger. Like I said, I, I don't, there's no reason that, that a Christian should ever spiritually be hungry. There, we have the word of God. We have good preaching from the word of God. We have the Bible in front of us. Anyway, I'm just saying. But so here's this, here's this boy and then he gets to this place and he says, what does he say about how he says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Well, what an attitude change, yeah. And, and no more worthy to be called thy son. Sometimes you have to be in a place of, of want, in a place of hurt, in a place of discomfort to get to that place where you go, wait a second, I've sinned against God. And before thee, and no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father now let's think about this welcome home party. I'll rise and go to my father. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father... That, that's one of those butts there that's pretty important. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. You think about that wonderful homecoming this prodigal son who had left in such a nasty attitude and, and uh, rebellious and disrespectful way and then went through so many things. And can you imagine, oh, the father at home, maybe in wonder every day. You know he couldn't, for, you know every day he was thinking about it. Y'all know how it is. And, and maybe some people in here have had ones that have, maybe kids that have moved to different places or even wandered and strayed and different things like that. And, and how do you not think about them every day? And... We watch people, many people with heartache and heartbreak over their children who've gone astray and went away from the Lord and everything's like that. But you think about that father as he was out there just wishing, maybe hoping and praying, maybe every day that the Lord would bring his son back to him. Wonder what it was like. I wonder what emotions went through his body at that time when he actually saw a shadow coming up over the horizon. Somebody who would live in such a sinful manner but return back to the place 
where he would never want again. Return back to a place and said, I, I'm willing now. I'm willing. I'll just be a servant. I don't care what it is. I'll just be happy to be back at the Father's house. I don't care what it is, what I do, or what part. And the Father here sees this image coming across. The, can you imagine how wonderful that must have been if you can think about maybe your, one of your children and I think, you know, if one of my children had run off or something, I'd, you know, seen different things like that. But anyway, and, uh, and then the joy of seeing them return home and the joy of seeing him and going, wow, he's still alive. Thinking he, they assumed, he, he assumed, he said, this my son was dead. Is, so all they could have assumed is that while he went off, they may have heard of the famine, may have thought, baby, all, all, for all we know, he's dead. But there's that slight glimmer of hope as he's thinking to the Lord. Can you imagine the welcome home party? Can you imagine the welcome home as we think about people who have been away from God? Sometimes they feel like, I don't know, how can I get back? I don't know, people are gonna think I'm crazy, all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you, if you've been away from God, this is Jubilee. It's time to get back to where we have. We're talking about drawing near, being closer to him than we ever have before, having God's presence and things like that. Sometimes you think the devil would like you to think because of the guilt of your sin and because of the guilt of how far you've been. And maybe it's been a while since you've read your Bible. Maybe it's been a while since you spent that serious time in prayer. Maybe you've wandered away from where you were. You know, there's a father that's looking and waiting for you. There's a father that still wants you to come back and wants to welcome you and have a welcome home celebration for you as well. And you can come back and it, with an attitude of saying, you know, I'll just be your servant. I don't care what you do. Lord, I just want to be back in fellowship with you somehow back in your house. I just want to have that right relationship with you. No matter if you make me a servant or a child or whatever, I just want to be back with you. But what he does when we come back to him and what happened here, he put the best robe on him. You know, the best robe, of course, is the robe of the Lord Jesus. It's righteous. It's a wonderful thing. Then he put a ring on his hand. And that's, that shows something of, of a significance. He, he wasn't just letting him be a slave anymore. He put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Okay, so the slaves and the servants, they didn't have shoes. No, 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 no. But the family, the close family, had shoes. The people that had authority, they had rings. The people that were welcomed in the family. And he welcomed them back home with welcome arms. Can you imagine how wonderful it must have been to have that? Can you imagine how wonderful it would be? If you've been far away from God, to be back to that place of special, close communion and relationship with him again. I don't know how far you've gotten, if you got far away in your heart or not, I don't know. Or if you've allowed your mind to wander, or allowed your time to get so busy that you've busied God right out, and I, 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 I fear most of us have done that. Even get busy about good things. You know, you can get busy doing good things. Like you can run a camp and be really busy about running a camp and not have time with God, you know, and, and seeing people safe, but not, it's, a, it's, a, it's work. And, uh, and it's a discipline. But I'm saying you get so busy, we get so busy sometimes, we don't have, and for goodness sake, we could all spend more time with him. We need him more now than we ever have when we think about the things going on, all that kind of stuff. But we need God, we need more of him, or he needs more of us, we know that. But can you imagine the welcome home? He would love to welcome you back home. If it's been a while since you've been in your Bible. I found out a long time ago. I went to a little spell where I had, uh, uh, I just, uh, I'd, I had spent a few days out of, uh, just a long time ago, and uh, spent a few days out of Scripture and different things, and I just felt like, Lord, how in the world can I get back? And then after, after a couple of days, you're so down on yourself, you know, after maybe one or two days out of the Bible, you start getting down on yourself and beating yourself up and, and not praying like you should. You think, well, how in the world can I go back? I can't go back now. What in the world am I going to do? What am I going to say? How can I do that? There's no way I can enjoy the relationship, fellowship anymore because I've been out so far. I'm such a low-down, dirty sinner now. I, just, I guess I'll just wait another day, you know? And, um, but now I got into Scripture, of course, what do we do? We need to confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. And then he said, to enter, it's been said before this week, to enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. You want to figure out a place to start getting back close to God and start working your way back. Have a place of repentance, just like this man did. Say, wait a second, I, I'm wrong. I, this is a terrible place to be. I should be in the place with the Father. And then have the Lord welcome you back home as you come in with thanksgiving and praise. As we ask his forgiveness and then praise him for it. And praise him for all the great things he's done for us. And praise him for And I found out it's, it's, that's a great way to get back and to step right back into the presence of God as we get into the heart of humility and thanksgiving and praise again. What about this? We think about the homecoming there with that man, that uh, prodigal son. What about the homecoming we read about over in Philemon? 
the book of Philemon over there, if you want to flip over there, it's not very long, so it's easy to go past it. In fact, I just did. There it was. Passed it right by. I saw a PH on the front of it. <laughs> just kidding. Right before Hebrews. That's a big book over there. Amen. Okay. One of the big ones over there. Right before Hebrews. I love Hebrews. That's a great, that's a great book. Oh, man. About the Lord Jesus, a one time sacrifice. I like that. Anyway, Philemon. You know, there's a welcome home that you could have with the Lord Jesus if you've been far away from him. What about this one over here in the book of Philemon? Verse number nine, read this. Yet for love's sake, I'd rather beseech thee, being such uh, as one as Paul the aged and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Here's Paul writing a letter to Philemon about this one servant. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Now, I don't know if Philemon quite understands yet, but, now, but he's going, <laughs> and uh, whom I have sent again. Thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own vows, whom I, have, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the, uh, of the gospel. But without... Thy mind would I do nothing that thy benefit should be should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly, for perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved. Well, it's kind of sounds familiar. Especially to me. But how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord? If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him. What, what about this? He says to receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee or owed thee aught, put that on mine account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it. Well, that's some, that's some, that's some heavy words in there. That's some heavy words in there. We think about this kind of suspicious runaway here. Maybe he did something wrong. Maybe some people suggest he may have stolen something. Some people suggest, uh, or maybe he just didn't, wasn't uh, fulfilled in his responsibility for with his servant, Fili or with his uh, master Philemon, whatever the case was, Onesimus evidently was a runaway. Servant and the master relationship had been wrong, was not right, tried to get away. Lo and behold, who does he meet? <laughs> he meets Paul. <laughs> Paul, what does Paul do? Well, Paul leads him to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> he becomes a son, uh, son and talk about uh, as he talks to him, about, talks about him as a son. And you know, you talk about he got saved. Amen. It's, here's this slave Onesimus, and here he got saved. He was a runaway. He had all these. Uh, was having all these problems. He was having to run away from, and he got saved. And Paul says, "Hey, you got to go back and face it, brother. <laughs> Let's go make these things right." But this time, he went to face his account and his judgment against him and whatever was going to happen as a result of how he had acted and his, how he had run away and how he had maybe stole something or had things on his account or whatever. This time he was going back with a letter, with a note. He was going back to face it with a letter and a note from somebody who was counted as a partner and as a dear friend in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ to Philemon. It's a little different this time as he goes back. Maybe he was a little unsure but he had something different. In this note, in this letter, he had some salvation in here to him. And he said, Paul said, I'm going to pay it. Put it on my account. Don't charge him with it anymore. But accept him. Accept him as one of yours. Accept him like he was me, like it was me standing in front of you. I wonder what come of home, what kind of homecoming this must have been. And what kind of welcome home party this must have been is maybe he saw this was coming and it went from the reception being maybe whether it was, I don't know if he had to beat him or not. I don't know. Sometimes they did that that day. I don't know if as a Christian, I don't know if Philemon would have done that or not. I don't know. But there would have been some sort of a restitution and punishment for this being a runaway and having to come back or maybe it would have been more added time. I don't know. I don't know how they would have handled it. But he came back and he went from a place of having more judgment and more restitution to a place to say, hey, now you can stay and eat with us and be a friend for life. And, oh, by the way, you got saved. Hallelujah. You're a brother in Christ now. Amen. What a wonderful homecoming that must have been. 
What a home, wonderful homecoming it is when a sinner gets saved. He says, I'm not running away anymore from my just dues that I deserve, but I'm going back to face it. But this time as I go back to face it, I'm not just facing it by myself as a slave. I'm facing it with a note, with a letter, with a word. A word that says I'm going to put it on my account. A word that says just if he owes anything, put it to me. That sounds like the Lord Jesus, doesn't it? As we come back as a sinner with the precious gospel, and now the word and the decree says on his account. That gives us a new robe like we read about a minute ago, a robe of righteousness where now we're covered and now we are accepted as a as, as one of his own beloved in the bowels of beloved and and uh, and a relationship with him and now he's back but now forever but now it's a servant not because I owe something because the, the debt's already been paid it was put on Paul and our debt has been put on the Lord Jesus and now we want to just come back as a servant forever as it said over a few verses before a servant forever not, not on the basis of account but on the basis of love on the basis of a great relationship and can be now profitable it was unprofitable before, but now we're profitable. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Not trying to play, pr play, but willingly serving forever. I wonder what kind of homecoming it was for the Lord Jesus. When he left heaven with a task to complete, the task to become a sacrificial, the sacrificial lamb of God, a plan that had been started a long time ago, came to be the one-time sacrifice to become the high priest for us to be the appreciation for our sins to be our substitution to defeat death, hell, and the grave. He left with a purpose. He left heaven splendor to take on a fleshly body, to be beaten and crucified and buried and, of course, risen again. He left to fight a fight that nobody else could fight. He left to take on the entire sins of the world. Can you imagine heaven watching even wanting to jump in as their precious beloved, the one that was the center attraction, the one that they loved, even the, the father communing with his son and him communing with his son. I don't understand it all, but praise God, it's in there, so I believe it. Amen. And, but being praised and glorified in the presence there of the angels and so forth. Can you imagine him watching and wanting, you know how it is, you got somebody that you see, you're watching your team, hey man, you want to jump in there. I watch the Tennessee Volunteers and I think, Man, I'd like to just jump in there and help them. They're doing terrible. Then I realize how big those boys are. Saying, well, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Amen. You're doing fine. I'll come kick for you. Amen. And uh, anyway, I don't know. Uh, I'll get you some water. Amen. But anyway, and uh, but can you imagine even as the onslaught of attacks from Satan that took place and of course through the Pharisees and, and he himself in the temptation. And can you imagine all heaven watching wanting to help him fight and, and jump in there and fight for their king. But of course he said, no, I've got to do this. Imagine three days and three nights as they're watching it after the Lord Jesus had yielded the, up the ghost and was buried. But can you imagine the victory chants and the praises from heaven after three days and three nights? And then after a few more days as he ascended up to his rightful place in heaven, the throne of God. and the, Can you imagine the welcome home reception then the Lord Jesus had and the cheers and the praises and, and all that as he came home as, as not just a, 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 a lamb going to the slaughter but a returning king, the returning lamb of God who had already fulfilled all those things and now the task was done. It had been completed. It was finished. Not to be left from heaven again for any other reason. Now he was back home to be ascended and, and to enjoy those joys that were set before him on the cross but then, of course, as he had the cheers and the praises and so forth, as he went home and being praised, being back up in heaven again, he said, wait a second, guys, I appreciate that, but we've got some work to do. I've got some other people coming behind me. <laughs> got some buildings to be built. Got some mansions that need to be worked on, some things that need to be finished. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be interceding for them, too. So let's uh, have it. Then we'll have another rejoicing time. Hey, man, I've got a bride coming, but, and she's getting ready, and we've got to get ready. But I just can't imagine the welcome home he had. How about... In Acts 7, we think about Stephen and the welcome home he must have had. As so we think about Stephen and even the other, I mean, there's something about it. It's one of those passages. Every time I read this passage, there's something about it. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. There's something about seeing this, the Lord Jesus Christ, what happens here. And Acts, of course, Acts 7, for me again, verse number 54. 
When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. I can't imagine what kind of a sight that must have been. All the hatred. And, boy, do you, you ever just feel that oppressed? Sometimes we talk to people that are just, uh, that are either atheists or that are just anti God or that are Democrats, whatever the case is. And uh, can you just feel that, you know, that animosity, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I'm not supposed to say that. Well, I did. And I'm an evangelist, so forgive me. It's not the belt. Don't take it on the pastor. Put that on my account. Amen. And uh, so. I'm ashamed, not at all. Okay, um, amen. It says more people need to stand up, and say something. Anyway, whatever. And uh, but can you imagine? But you know, as you talk to these people, you can just feel that animosity. You know, you just get that stirred. And can you imagine what he was going through here and this and all of these people? And he's sitting there. You know, he knows he's right because the Lord Jesus. He's, he's trying to tell him about Jesus. He's a man. Well, by the way, he wasn't one of the great apostles or something. He was a deacon. <laughs> But he was full of the Holy Ghost, amen. And uh, there's some great things in her side. As, as, but anyway, and uh, can you imagine how how crazy that must have been to have all these people? We we've, we've never had I, I, in my life. About every time I talk to somebody about what we do in the ministry, now, it's getting you get funny looks now. But especially when I started preaching t about you know 15 years ago, and I just started as a young kid, and almost everybody said they said, "Man, that's a, that's great." Hallelujah, praise the Lord, man, that's great. We're going to be praying for you. That's wonderful. He didn't have that. He had everybody around him wanting to kill him. And in fact, they did. And, and the animosity, all that stuff there, that anger that they had. Boy, ain't no anger like somebody needs to get saved that won't. I mean, that's, that's angry. And uh, to the place that they wanted, they were going to up and kill him. And they started stoning him. And what happened? Verse number 54 says, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Woo. He started the welcome home party and starting. Amen. The clouds were rolling back. They're about to welcome him up and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Of course, they didn't like it. It didn't matter. He was going home anyhow. <laughs> they couldn't stop him as much as they were aggravated with him and all that stuff. Do you believe that actually the hip? of the church, the head of heaven, the Lord Jesus, the Savior, the risen King, not saying, oh great, somebody else is coming up, but standing, showing his love and appreciation for the fact that Stephen would stand for him. Not allowing others only to welcome him, but standing to welcome him himself. Isn't that a wonderful thing? I wonder what kind of homecoming that must have been as, as he was standing, just as to say, well done. As to say, I love you and respect what you did for me at the cross and what joy there was as standing in his welcome home to say, by the way, Stephen, this won't happen again. But maybe watch what your life has impacted in the suffering. Maybe he got, I don't know how it works, maybe he got to see a glimpse of what happened with Paul. And I know there's rejoicing in the presence, so that means that somehow they got to know when somebody gets saved. So maybe somehow, he knows, I don't know how it all works. I don't know. Can you imagine the other saints and loved ones who have gone on before and the joyful reception that they had? Of course, it's a wonderful re reception and the good time, the rejoicing and the joy and the anthems as saints are come, saints uh, finally get to the place where it's home. Hey Amen. Finally, a place where, oh, I fit in here. Hey Amen. There's not animosity here. There's no anger. There's not uh, uh, turmoil and, and turned up things and all this kind of stuff. There's no sin. Hey Amen. All those things. I, I was out of place down there in that world, but now... I, well, I'm home, <laughs> and I'm at a place that's home. I fit in here now. Thank God. It's, oh, this is my kind of place. This is my kind of praising. Now, there's some people that have gone on before and that will go on after that their homecoming may not be quite as exciting. I don't know. Think about people who might quite be ashamed at the coming of the Lord Jesus. Or I'm sure at that instant when they're there and their eyes are lifted and they realize where they're at, that they're home in heaven, I'm, I'm sure, as the song says, I wish I'd give them more. People who've been asleep as Christians, and maybe even useless. So, of course, we're always always looking at wonders. We see people who say they're saved and never do anything for the cause of Christ. You just wonder. It's like showing up at church is all there is to it. It's not all there is to it, my friends. That's just one command of the Lord Jesus, but the, he's worth serving with our whole life. That's the negative, Amen. <laughs> But how about your or my homecoming? You understand that one day, one day it's going to be you and me. The preacher, I never got a hold of it. Like I had a couple of months ago, our preacher was preaching some different things, and I don't even know if he meant to get on it, but he started talking about heaven and, and, and going home. 
and being in heaven and talking about the different things in heaven. You can read Revelation. I was reading it last night. Oh, it's so beautiful thinking about the places and how, what it's going to be like there and all that kind of stuff. Of course, free from all the things, that, the problems. But can you imagine a welcome home as one day your eyes will shut down here forever? But then it will be forever opened up again. Can you imagine that, that that very moment opening up and realizing, I'm home. I'm done. It's over. At that very moment, you open up your eyes and realize how you made it there. It was only by God's grace. The reality sets in, I'm only here because you can't help but start to praise him and thank him because you're there. And you know how you made it, whether it was through the trials of life or whether it was because of salvation, it was all because of him. And whether it was being faithful to death or just even being, oh, what a welcome home. What a great welcome home time that's going to be. Aren't you looking forward to it? Amen. We get to go there. It's a special place. We'll finally be home. The victory will be done in our lives. Oh, it's so, can you imagine somebody being up there and thinking, oh, Lord, Lord, can I sing with them? This singing so beautiful and perfect. It's praising you. Can I sing with them? Hey, Lord, can I bow and praise you now? Hey, Lord, this body works. <laughs> hey, I've got relief. Hey, look at the reunion. Hey, look, look at these people that are up here that, I, that have gone on. Oh, what reality will finally sit in? We don't understand reality now, but we will then as we wake up our eyes in that final homecoming to the reality the wars and struggles down here are over. Our eyes will be opened up. I, some people are scared of this day. And I don't know why. And there may be people here today that are having those feelings of fears and anxiety towards death. My friends, if you have been saved by the grace of God, you can look forward to that blessed welcoming home day. It will never be a regret. My friends, I want to be ready. I don't want to regret my service for the king when I finally get to open my eyes one day. Realizing how much grace and mercy it took for God to save somebody like me and it would allow me to go to heaven. One day the trumpet's going to sound. The last call is going to be given. One day our time here, our work will be done. Are you satisfied with the work that you're doing, thinking about that wonderful, blessed homecoming one day? Are you satisfied with your service for the king? Would you be satisfied if you were to be in his presence at this very second? If he were to call your life to be done for the last breath? I think myself, I would wish I'd given him more. I know I would can't believe he allows us to go to heaven. People that are so unworthy, people that deserve hell. Thank God for his grace. Oh, I made it. Amen. By his grace and mercy. Now, what are you doing for him? What kind of homecoming will it be for you? Well, we need to get on our knees and our face and thank God that we get to go there. We ought to be rejoicing and joyful, not fearful that day, but rejoicing and looking. We ought to be fearful for the ones that we know and that we love. That if their eyes were to shut for the last time today, their eyes would lift up in heaven. Their eyes would lift up like that rich man in hell. Had all the things of this world, but didn't have him. Well, our hearts ought to be broken for those people. Let's pray. Father, would you please bless these thoughts this morning? Lord, we thank you, Lord, for receiving prodigal sons home. Thank you for receiving the ones home. Thank you for receiving me back, Lord. As a, thank you for receiving me as a sinner. Like Onesimus, that slave that had been a runaway because of his account that he couldn't pay. Thank you, Lord, for putting it on your account. Thank you that my sins have been forgiven and washed away. But thank you, Lord, those times as a Christian I got away and wandered a little bit. And my far country may not have been as far as others, but it was far enough to be out of fellowship with you. Thank you, Lord, for welcoming me back with open arms with a fatted calf, with a great relationship and a, a hug and embrace like no other from you, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord, for those saints who've gone on before us and their faithfulness and their testimony. 
And what welcome home they had. And we just thank you, Lord, for the sacrifices that have been made for us to have the gospel and the Bible in our hands. Lord, thank you that we have a day to look forward to. And one day our eyes will open in heaven. Forever done with troubles and trials and struggles and pain and worry. Also, our work will forever be done. And Lord, I pray you'd help us today that our lives would be challenged, that we would work and serve you more. That we would be more concerned for the lost who will not have that same eternal destiny unless we do something about it. I pray you'd help us to serve you with our whole heart and our whole life. And live in thanksgiving and praise, not in fear and worry of death, but looking forward to that great blessed day. Blessed hope you could come back any moment. Help us to be ready and watch. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brother Tim. <clears throat> I just feel like we need to have an invitation about now. Covered a lot of ground. And uh, sort of like a scattergun. Amen. Homecoming day. Let's turn to 271. He's going to do double duty and play the piano for us. Lord, I'm coming home. Let's stand and sing it together. We're, <clears throat> we're all family here. Altars open. Boy, to be ready for that homecoming day. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. Paths of sin too long I've trod. Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home, never more to roam, open wide thine I'm coming home I've wasted many precious years Now I'm coming home I now repent with bitter tears Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home, evermore to roam, open wide thine arms of love Lord I'm coming home let's sing the last my soul is sick doesn't have to stay that way my heart is sore that can get fixed now I'm coming home my strength renew, my hope restore. Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home, never more to Open wide thine arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home. 
All God's people said, amen. Thank you, thank you, brother. You sure helped us. We're going to take about a 10-minute break right now.